So one of my favorite stakeholder mapping tools is, is this framework. So um, this is a very simple stakeholder mapping um, framework. It's not too exhaustive and that's why I like it. I like it, it's easy, it's lightweight, it's really quick to do. Draw three circles um, on a whiteboard or on a mirror board and away you go. The way that this breaks down is what you have is three tiers of stakeholders. And the first one is your core stakeholders. So these are people who are your like top stakeholders. They tend to be very few in numbers. You're talking about someone like your direct manager um, or maybe the sponsor of the project or maybe the general manager for the business unit that your product um, belongs to. You really shouldn't have a lot of people in core. It's one of the reasons why it's the middle circle. And I also like to see it as a restriction or a physical restriction on space. You should only be able to fit so many names in there and you really should keep it down to an absolute minimum. In this example, we have your direct manager, we have the design lead and the tech lead um, on, on the product and then the team itself. Very simple example, but like I said, you could have people like um, the GM of the business unit that you work for or those types of things. As we start to move out of our core stakeholders, so remember that core were people who are your top stakeholders. They're involved day to day, all the time. Um, they are people that need to be informed of almost every decision. And um, those types of people are your core. As we start to move out, we get into our direct stakeholders. These people are still involved um, on a day to day basis, but this isn't their life. Right, core, you, core stakeholders, this is often their world. This is what they are worrying about 24 seven. They're either part of the team in this example or someone like your direct manager who is part of their, their area of responsibility. They, they think about this all the time and this is, is their core thing, right? So that's why they're a core. Direct on the other hand, they may have a day-to-day -day involvement, but this could be a side thing on top of their job. Um, you can think about people here like the product marketing manager, right? They might be doing other things, um, dealing with maybe even other products um, or dealing with other marketing um, initiatives and work and those types of things. And this is just something that they are involved with on a regular basis, likely daily, if not close to daily, but it's not their whole life. It's not the sole focus that they have and not the only thing that they do. You could argue your manager or direct manager could be tiptoeing the line between direct and core. That's kind of up to you where you wanna put them. But um, really, that's kind of the distinguish um, difference. So you may have, you're gonna have stakeholders here who this is maybe the um, one of the key products that they look after or, or have a, a, you know, that impacts them. Um, you will have people like maybe the engineering manager who looks after multiple teams and, and across multiple products. So you're just one subset of all of them. So they're involved day to day because you have engineers in your team that work on your product that they're responsible for, but they have a wide net and a lot of engineers, right? You may even have in this example, um, a product manager on another team. You might have a de dependent team that you need to work with all the time. And in order for you to succeed, they need to do something. Uh, so they would be someone who's direct because there's a there's a direct impact and there's a direct uh, relationship there, right? So that's the, the difference with a direct stakeholder. And then as we zoom out even further, we end up when the final circle, which is our indirect stakeholders. So these are people who aren't involved day to day. Um, your work is kind of on the periphery. They like to be updated every now and then, but they don't need to be across every single decision, every single thing that's going on. It's just more of a FYI, I want to keep you informed. So working back through it, the core, this is their life, this is their day-to-day, -day, this is what they worry about, this is what they think about. They're involved in decisions, they're involved in the day-to-day -day work, um, all of those types of things. Uh, direct are people who are involved day to day. They probably collaborate with you, collaborate on some decisions, but this isn't their sole world. This isn't the only thing that they focus on. They have a direct impact there and a direct interest, but this isn't what they do all the time. And then finally, we get to indirect, which is more the people who need to be informed. You're not directly collaborating with these people. You're keeping them informed um, and they're, they're indirect stakeholders for that reason. So I've got some people there like founder, um, the CPO, maybe CTO. So you can see the difference there. Engineering manager is direct. The tech lead, no, the tech lead is your core stakeholder. The engineering manager is your direct stakeholder. And then their boss, the CTO, becomes the indirect. You can kind of see how that ladder works there. the other thing that it's really, really powerful for is when we start to think about our stakeholders in these tiers, 
it can really help us. What I mean by that is people down here in the core, they tend to be stakeholders that are directly involved all the time, right? So we want to have a high frequency when it comes to building a relationship with them, right? We want to be meeting with them regularly. This also means we the, the relationship that we have with them is really, really important. It's integral to our success. So we also want it to be high touch. Now, when we think about, well, what is high touch and what is high frequency? Well, frequency is quite easy to answer. We just want to meet with them really, really regularly. Some of these stakeholders you might want to meet with even on a daily basis, right? High frequency. Um, I'm talking minimum once a week, maximum you know once a day type of frequency here. Now, high touch is... Um, the difference here would be high touch would be that we want to do that face to face or we want to spend a lot of time and you know that real care time together where we collaborate, we work through decisions. And this isn't like the indirect people, which we'll get to, which will be low touch, um, which we can just send an email to, right? Because it's more of an FYI for them. So they're the complete opposite, low frequency or lower frequency and low touch. So low touch could be an email, like I said. It could be a once a quarter showcase or demo. It could be once a month kind of demo. Um, but these aren't people who you're trying to get them involved in every single minute detail. It's very low touch. I'm gonna write up a summary email or do a video or host a demo where we bring many people in. I'm not looking to really specifically tailor it to them. That would be high touch. I'm not looking to try and craft the agenda to them and make it for them specifically, it's gonna be very generic. It's gonna be across many people, probably across the direct and indirect um, stakeholders, and we're gonna cast a wide net. Very low touch, I'm not gonna put a lot of thought and effort into it, uh, and we're gonna do it at a lower frequency. When I say low frequency, I mean once a month at the absolute like maximum, um, and then the minimum would be any type of frequency beyond that, right? So if you're only keeping the CPR or the founders updated once a quarter, that could be completely fine in your context. Um, but if you're trying to keep them up to date every week, that doesn't make sense, particularly if they're an indirect stakeholder. So this is really useful. When we're starting to look at our stakeholders, we can map them back against where they sit in the stakeholder map and if we have somebody who's you know far out here in particular in the indirect, and we have down next to them you know a a you know bi-monthly one-on-one, then that probably doesn't make sense because they should be a low frequency uh, and a low touch. So we might want to adjust that to be something else. We might lower the frequency. We might change the touch. So we might do something like well keep them up to date in a monthly demo, um, or we might do something like an email. There's many options there, but we can adjust. The inverse is also true. If you see a stakeholder that sits more in the core side of the fence or even in the direct, and you have them down for a very low frequency or maybe a very low touch how, you might want to revisit that and think about, well, should I change that? And this is all because the people who are core and more direct, as you move towards the center of the circle here with stakeholders, these are more key stakeholders. You have to build and foster a stronger relationship with them. So therefore, the best way for us to do that is to create a higher frequency and a higher touch. And then the people in the further and the far out circles, we can allow that to be lower frequency and lower touch because they are a lower priority to us in terms of having a strong relationship with and a strong working relationship with. We still need to build a relationship with them. We still need to have a relationship so we can leverage it and we can influence, but it it's, doesn't need to be as strong as those towards the center of the circle. If you like the format, this video, let me know as well. I'll keep churning them out. And, and ultimately I do all my content and everything I create is to be helpful and hopefully someone can get some value out of it and learn something. So if you did and you got some value out of it, let me know as well. I always appreciate it. And I will keep churning it out as long as people get some value out of it. I'll keep doing it. And thanks again. I'll see you at the next one.